Hey guys, hope you're having a good day so far. So I got this 06 or 05 Silverado here, and I made a video on this a few, I don't know, maybe a month ago, six weeks ago, two months ago, something like that. This Silverado customer bought it, and he's actually a good customer of mine. It kind of shocked me that he bought it without bothering to have me look at it. Um, and like the rocker panels are rotted out, and um, the frame's got a little bit of rot in it. You know, not bad, but like in a couple of spots, it's got like little rot holes in it. But anyway, so it turns out, like, I wound up fixing the back bumper, the trailer hitch. I think you remember the trailer hitch had been sectioned. It was, like, it was horrible. And then also the thing, somebody put these oversized, ridiculous tires on the stock steel rims, and they squatted the truck a little bit, you know, only by, because it's a torsion bar suspension, only by lifting the front. It looked terrible. The truck looked terrible. Anyway, I did some work to it, got a lot of it straightened out. Obviously, I didn't touch the frame or anything else. I got a lot of it straightened out, and it turns out he wound up, I guess, one of his family members wanted the truck for whatever reason, so he sold it to his family member. And the family member knows all about the problems, because I got the truck back, and, you know, he was telling me he knows, you know, about the frame and, you know, this and that and the other thing, but he's cleaned it up, and he actually put some aftermarket rims on it. When it pulled in, I didn't know it was the same truck. I'll show it to you on the ground once I'm done, but I've got, I got to show you this. So here's the truck. And if you remember, it just had some god-awful rims on it. But he's polished it up. He's cleaned it up. He's made it look pretty good. And like I said, on the ground, I didn't know it was the same truck. But so anyway, he came in, and his complaint was that the left front brake is hanging up and making a lot of noise. Okay, and I'm like, I'm sitting there thinking about it. I was like, I just looked at this thing like three, four weeks ago for noise in the brakes. And left front also. And I remember the backing plate had rotted away and it fell. And it was stuck in between the rotor and the hub. Okay. Not a big deal. So I had taken that apart, you know, got it all cleaned up and um, took it and there was no problem. So now all of a sudden it comes in making this weird noise from the left front. Now check this out. So, oh yeah, here, let me show you this. If you, as you see, I got the special socket for these weirdo lug nuts. Here, let me show you this. Now if you look close, you'll see... The guy who put them on was beating some kind of a socket on there to make... These are brand new. But instead of getting the right tool, you could see he was banging the daylights out of it, driving some kind of a socket on there to make it work. The sockets that I got, they're the... I can't, think, can't get that one off. It'll come off once I get it out. But anyway, yes, yeah, so that's the, right, that's the right tool for it. But somebody was just beating the daylights out of a regular, I guess, 12-point socket or something to get it on there. So, but anyway, check this out. Hear that? <laughs> yeah, okay. So now the wheel bearing's actually jammed up, and I wonder. Oh, yeah, there we go. If you look, you can actually see. Look at the brakes there. Look at the caliper. Watch. How much movement is in this thing? See that? Yeah, that's just me by hand. I mean, imagine with the weight of the truck on there. So let me get this apart. And I'm going to put a hub and bearing in it for him. I'm not even going to bother calling him because he's going to be okay with it. So let me get this done and uh, let me get it apart and I'll show you once it's apart. So there we go. Caliper and rotor as well. And if you look close in there, you'll see. Oops, sorry. See that movement there? You can actually see the wear marks in between there, too. Uh, let's see if it'll make the noise. <laughs> yeah, I think. Yeah, that bearing's a little shot. All right, so on these, they use a dust cover just to protect the end of the axle. There's no grease or anything in there. So I'm going to knock this off, and then I'm going to take the nut off. So let me knock this off, so this way you can see the inside of that. On a lot of these two, you'll find this dust cover missing. It's not a big deal, like I said, because nothing, there's no grease in there. Uh, basically, just have the axle. It's just to keep a little bit of water out. I've seen them without it and never had a problem, so not a big deal. To get the dust cover off without destroying it, and you can use this, you can do this trick on uh, rear wheel drive cars that have packable front wheel bearings and use like a dust cover like this. Take a chisel and go in between the edge, like right there, see that? And then what'll happen is you'll actually you start to hit it in and you'll separate this point from this point. 
and then the whole thing will come out and just like that and now you can see that so now i'll take the nut off now see that see how nice and clean that is that's because the cover was on it but like i said i've seen it with the cover missing it's not a, it doesn't really change anything other than the fact that you get moisture in there so you get some rust in there but there's no grease or anything else so it's nothing to really be overly concerned about so let me get this off now to take the axle nut off it's pretty much just a simple put a socket on it with a gun to get it off so now that's a 36 millimeter just put that on there with the gun and just like that it comes out and don't forget there's a washer back there don't forget to put that on not every axle has that pay attention to it if the if the nut is flat like this and it doesn't have a built-in like flange piece sticking out like a built-in washer then it's going to have a washer so just something to keep in mind now once you get that off like that what you want to do is just push on it see if it'll go in this one is not moving so what i'll do is take a hammer like this brass hammer and there you see it's actually that way it moves in you don't distort it by using the brass hammer and you can also get this washer off so this is not in your way but now like i said you drove that in so now you don't have to fight with it once the hub is actually loose now to get the hub off you have three 15 millimeter headed bolts right there there's one there there's one there and then there's one on the opposite side so we're going to get those out and on this you have to worry about the abs sensor so the abs sensor comes up and it connects right behind the shock tower you can reach up there and disconnect it just you can see the blue right there that's the end of the connector now one thing the customer did this himself he sprayed the white lithium grease on everything don't do that don't use white lithium grease the reason you don't want to use white lithium grease is because what happens is you spray it on there now you just attracted dirt it doesn't do anything it really doesn't do anything just leave it alone don't spray nothing on there it's not going to help you at all as you see i got the bottom bolt out not a big deal top bolt's a little bit of a pain because of the ball joint stud and just how it's positioned it, it basically i had to wrench the whole thing out not a big deal it could stay in there it's not hurting anything by laying in there it's not connected here you can see i got the abs sensor disconnected now what i got to do is go to the other side and I'm going to cut the wheels over so this way I can get to the bolt on that side. So now with the wheels cut to the left, I should be able to get right on there with an impact and a 15 swivel. Just like that. you got to be careful because you don't want to also hurt the boot. You can hurt the boot on the axle if you're not careful. So there, that came out, no problem. I said, you can take this out if you want to. I just leave them in. It's really not a big deal. Now, to try to get this off. Sometimes you got to really beat the daylights out of it to get it off. Now, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the other side and cut the wheels back. So this way I have this clear opening where the caliper was to hit the back side of this to try to knock it off. So let's come over to this side. And we're going to cut the wheels back to the other direction like that. Now, let me get my BFH. Now, my BFH isn't all that big, but I tell you what, I've had this thing for years. It's a dead blow, and it works perfectly for its size. It does very well. So now, basically, you're going to have to hit it like this to try to separate it. Once it starts to separate it, you'll see it come apart right in there. So let me give it a couple quick hits like this and see if it starts to move. Nothing really it doesn't look like it's actually made a move so let me do this let me put the camera down this way I can get you know use two hands to swing at this thing to hit this thing to try to make it come free and she's not moving you can see here I've been beating on this thing pretty good and it's not moving it did start to break away some of the rust but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take an air chisel and I'm gonna go in between these edges here with an air chisel same thing like what I did with the cap here you just hit it and you try to drive it in and it'll separate it and push the thing out so i actually haven't had one fight me this bad in a long time as you can see i was hitting it pretty good in there with the air chisel all the way around it wasn't breaking free so what i did was i made my own little press you put the bolt through you hold the nut here and have it press against the hub now the the nut may stay in place i may not have to hold it with a wrench anymore but as you can see it finally started to separate 
and basically you just use the gun and make it become its own press. Okay, I am going to have to hold that. Let me see if I can do all three things at once. Now let's do it from this angle, maybe. Nah, that ain't going to work. Let's try it like this. See that? Basically, it works it right out. So now that it's coming out, once I get it out, the damage that was done to the hub, uh, to the knuckle, right there and there, basically going to clean it up with a file or a light grinder or something. You just want to smooth it out, that's all. So let me get this out. And there, it's finally out. I can't even turn it by hand right now. It's completely locked solid. You can see there's a little movement there. But yeah, I can't even turn the darn thing. Now this is what's left of the old backing plate. If you're, if you're ever doing this and you distort the backing plate like this, and you're trying to go put it back on, take a reamer or a drill bit. Just be careful because if it once it catches, it'll actually grab the whole thing and spin it around. You can really hurt yourself. So try to put it in a vise or something or just do it slow and gentle. Or take like a um, deburring tool and go inside there just to open the holes up. So now that that's off, like I said, all I got to do is just clean the surface up here and here. I'm just going to smooth it out. You don't want to go nuts. It's okay that it has a little bit of little bit of damage, so to speak, like that. I'm also going to clean up the inside here. Um, let's see. I actually have porting tools to port cylinder heads. I use them for a lot of different things, and they come in super handy. They're basically little roll wheels, uh, sandpaper rollers, and you just basically go inside there. They're like little drums, and just go inside there. Kind of like what you would have for a Dremel, but I have it for some air tools. So let me get... Actually, i got to go to the store and get the new hub bearing. I don't even have it yet. So let me do that, and let me get the new hub bearing ready, and let me clean all of this up, and I'll show you what I got before I go together. Now, this is the thing I was telling you about with the uh, drum roll of uh, sandpaper. See that? It's actually a porting tool. But what I usually use this for is to sand out, like, the inside of that. And, you know, I'll go in here like this. Let me show you just briefly, but then I'm going to put this down only because of the noise. Like that just to clean it up and i'm gonna do that whole thing get it nice and clean and then we'll come back to this as you can see i got it pretty darn clean that's rust it's kind of like embedded in there it's not going to have any effect on me bolting the hub up now if you look too you'll see from me hitting that with the air hammer i kind of damaged the end of it and you can see the bolt if i try to put that through from the other side and that's not going to go through same with that one so usually what i do is i try with this first i don't like using like a reamer well, I mean, this is a reamer, but uh, one of those air ones with the uh, the deburring bit because it makes those little metal shavings that wind up getting shut, stuck in your finger somewhere or in your hand or whatever. Those are a real pain. So I usually do something like this. Use this kind of a reamer. Just ream it out. Worst comes to worst, I'll take a drill bit. But usually I could do it just fine with this. Just like that. Just get the edge off of it. Oh, see the bolt goes through now. So I usually do that. I'll blow the holes out before I actually put the new hub on. Uh, let's see. I think that's about it. So let me get the other one reamed out. And I'm going to... Actually, I, I usually spray everything up with WD-40 before I put it back together. So let's do all of that. Let's get that back together. And like I said, there's no backing plate on this side because it rotted away. So I'm not too concerned about it. But let me do that. Get the hub in place. So there. I have the top one just caught. Now I'm going to catch this one. As you can see, I got WD on everything. It's not going to hurt nothing. It's actually good for it. it. helps go back together a little bit easier. Now when you're tightening these things down... Don't just tighten one and then go to the next one and then go to the next one. Tighten it down a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. This way you draw it in because a lot of times, you know, like this will probably sit flush. Yeah, it'll sit flush on its own. But what you want to do is you don't want to, if you over tighten one or you just even tighten one, you go to the next one, you can actually, like, see how it's bowed out like here? You can actually make it hang up and actually bend the ear in and have this thing sticking out. And that'll shorten the life of the bearing. Especially if you have no way of torquing these things and you're doing it all by feel. There again, remember how tight they were when you pulled it apart and try to tighten it up the same way. Obviously, if they were seized up, you don't want to tighten it up to the point of being seized up. But you kind of understand what I mean. So let's get going. Let's get the three bolts in. And like I said, a little bit, 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 a little bit until you get the thing down. So that's it. It's in. It's bolted up. One quick thing to remember when you're putting these things back together, 
make sure you have the ABS sensor in the right position because if you put it in over here, you're in the wrong position or underneath and then you're going to have a problem. You've got to take it all back apart again. So just make sure you put it in the right position right off the bat. So let me get the rest of this assembled. Okay, as you can see, everything's in tight, torqued and whatnot. Got the cap back on. When you put these caps back on, don't smack the center of them with a hammer or even the edge. Take a chisel or a punch or even a screwdriver, just use something, and tap the edges, you know, here to put it in place. That way it stays nice and neat and you don't look like a hack. Okay, so yeah, let's get the wheel on and let's road test this. Just wanted to show you. Now it spins nice, it's quiet. You know, no more issues there. There's no play in the wheel. So everything's good there. So let me let this thing down. Let me wash up, take this thing for a road test. Going down my little dead end road here. I mean, it feels good. There's no noises, nothing weird going on. So I'm gonna call this a success. Actually, let me turn around, let me pull back to the shop. Because I was the only one there and I left the shop wide open. But I'm only around the corner, so I'm not too worried about it. Nice house. It's abandoned. Don't, don't know why. It's a nice house. Anyway. So yeah, let me get back to the shop. Alright, so I'm back at the shop. And I just wanted to show you something real quick. Now, I don't know if you guys saw the other video that I had with this truck, what it looked like. But compared to what it looked like and what it looks like now, I mean, it ain't too bad. Actually, it's not too bad at all. The front end is down as far as it'll go. The adjustment on the torsion bars is down as far as it'll go. It still has a very, very, very slight break to the back. It's very slight though. I mean, it's almost unnoticeable, to be honest with you, when, you're, when you uh, see this thing parked on a level road. Our road is not overly level here. But actually, I think I did a pretty good job making it look better. So hopefully that helped some of you out. Uh, if it did, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. All right, guys. Have a great day. Keep wrenching.